Howdy everybody, it's Randy L. Ray, the Literate Texan, and I am back with another episode of my library tour. 16 more books from the shelves. And as you can see behind me, the ever-present bookshelf, I put back all the books that were on the top shelf, and I got all the books off the uh, next to the top shelf. I don't know if there's a word for that, like penultimate or something. Maybe not. But anyway, this is what I got on my shelves. There's 16 books here. I'm going to go through them one by one, but I'm also going to go through them in little organized groups, and I have a surprise book to show you at the end. But the first three books on this shelf are all Jonathan Franzen novels, and I guess uh, Jonathan Franzen is a serious writer of contemporary literary fiction. I have not read these books, although I think I got about two-thirds of the way through the corrections, and never finished it. I don't know why I didn't finish it. Um, I didn't dislike it. I don't have any bad memories of it. Um, probably caught, you know what? I might've got two thirds of the way through it and then broke my arm, I don't know. But here's what I've got from Jonathan Franzen on my shelves. I bought all three of these books at a wonderful thrift shop here in Denton called Ruth's Room Two. At one time there was Ruth's Room, which is where they sold all the furniture and the knickknacks and that sort of thing that you usually find at a thrift shop. But they had Ruth's Room 2, which was the bookstore section, and it was a separate little bookstore that all the inventory came through donations. They didn't buy books from people. They were all donated. And I guess, you know, after the pandemic hit, they weren't able, this is my assumption, I'm not 100% sure that this is correct, but my assumption is that the bookstore wasn't making enough money for it to make sense for them to have a second location. So he moved all the books back into the original Ruth's room. Still a great destination to find really cool books here in Benton, Texas at a really good price. And that's where I got these. This is Purity, which I know almost nothing about, but I'm assuming from the cover that there's a woman who's the main character. Young Pip Tyler, who doesn't know who she is. She knows that her real name is Purity, that she's saddled with $130,000 in student debt. She's squatting with anarchists in Oakland. Okay, I've read enough of that that I want to read the book, which is good because it's a long book. It's, you know, almost 600 pages. Also, the uh, corrections, which I never even took the price tag off of. This is the one that I read a whole bunch of and never finished. It's also a really long novel. To me, it's, it's it, over 500 pages is a long novel. And you know what? This is not the corrections, as anyone who looks at the cover could tell you. It's Freedom which is another novel that I know nothing about. Patty and Walter Berglund were the new pioneers of old St. Paul, the gentrifiers, the hands-on parents, the avant-garde of the Whole Foods generation. I don't know. Sounds interesting to me. He's won a lot of awards. And I don't mean a lot of awards like he's won three awards. If you go to his Wikipedia page, there's a whole list of awards that Jonathan Franzen has won. And he's written some essays about the state of modern literature. He takes things very seriously, apparently. And there was a well-publicized feud with Oprah Winfrey at one point. I don't know if that helped his career or hurt his career or what. He's actually written seven novels. But at the time I bought these three books, these were the three main novels that he was known for. And here's my copy of the corrections. Okay. So, actually, I'm 345 pages into this one because I left my bookmark in here. It's a bookmark from Ruth's Room. It's $2 million. So, now I know where I got to in it. But you know what? It's been so long since I got to that. It's a, another 550-word novel. So, I got about 60% of the way through it, which is about two-thirds of the way. Anyway, I'll... Start rereading this one. I'll just start over from page one because I don't remember even the names of the characters there, okay? Those are the three Jonathan Franzen novels on my list or on my shelf. And then next to those, and, and you're going to get the idea that I'm an eclectic reader and store my books eclectically too because the next two books on that shelf are both Robert P. Robert B. Parker novels, Sudden Mischief, which is a Spencer novel, and School Days. And these are both Spencer novels. And 
I don't know. It looks like Spencer's always being adapted into other media. There was a TV show on in the 1980s that my mom just loved, starring Robert Urich as Spencer. Then there were some made-for-TV movies starring Joe Mantegna. And more recently, I guess there was a Mark Wahlberg movie about Spencer. I haven't read these, but I've read Robert B. Parker's Western novels, and I really liked them. So, I, I don't see any reason I wouldn't like his crime novels, too. He's got kind of a crisp, hard-boiled writing style. Apparently, he's very influential. Wrote over 40 novels. So, I'm looking forward to digging into these. I don't know when I'll get to them, but I am looking forward to them. And next to those, I have a stack of five novels by Michael Connolly. Michael Connolly is best known for creating the character Bosch. My mother-in-law loves him. I've watched an episode or two of the TV show, thought it was really solid stuff. But my interest in Michael Connolly mainly lies in his series of novels, The Lincoln Lawyer, because I hate to pick a favorite genre, and I reserve the right to change my mind about this at any time. But if I did have a favorite genre, it would be the legal thriller. That's both on television, and that's both in novels. Scott Turow, to me, is a genius. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of John Grisham here and there, although it's really lightweight stuff. I think Michael Connolly's a, a better writer than John Grisham, but not as good as Scott Turow. Still, really solid stuff. And this is what I've got. I've got the, the Brass Verdict here. And I also bought these at Rooster, and you can tell by the price tags on the cover. Um, I believe... I could be wrong about this, but I believe that The Brass Verdict is the first Lincoln Lawyer novel. And then I have The Scarecrow, which, okay, I'm going to look at this. I don't know. Jack McAvoy. I think this might be separate from the Bosch series and from the Lincoln Lawyer series, but I'm not 100% sure. Saw Michael Conley on the cover, saw that it was marked down at the thrift store, grabbed everything they had. The Gods of Guilt, I'm almost certain that this is a Lincoln Lawyer novel. Yeah, Mickey Holler is the main character in the Lincoln Lawyer novels. Love the movie with Matthew McConaughey, haven't seen the TV series yet. The Reversal is the next one. Another Lincoln Lawyer novel. And finally, The Wrong Side of Goodbye. Man, what a great title that is. This is a Bosch novel, not a Lincoln Lawyer novel. And when I read this, it will be the first Bosch novel I've read. But I'm really looking forward to that. So, Michael Conley, thumbs up in my book. Great writer. So, and then finally, that's 10 books, okay? For those of you keeping score at home, the final six books on that shelf, and don't forget, i got a bonus book I'm going to talk about at the end. But the final six books on my shelf are all by James Lee Burke. And James Lee Burke is a crime novelist, and I believe he's also a recovering alcoholic. Uh, most of his books are about a character named Dave Robichaux, who was played in a movie called... You know, I don't know why The Shawshank Redemption pops into my head is the name of the movie because that's not it. Um, those of you who've been watching my show for a while or visiting with me here on YouTube, however you want to look at it, know that sometimes thoughts escape me. And uh, one of his books got made into a movie and Tommy Lee Jones played uh, Dave Robichaux to perfection. And he's a recovering alcoholic who's also a private detective but he's, you know, all your private detectives in fiction are an ex-something, and, and he's an ex-cop. But he's written, I don't know, two or three dozen novels in this series. And they're all terrific, you know. He's got this wonderful, lyrical, poetical uh, writing style that, uh, you know, is way more literary than, literary than you would expect from crime novels. But that's not all he writes. They're not just those uh, Dave Robichaux novels. There's also a series of novels about, hmm, I don't have any copies of them over here. But anyway, uh, he's written a series of novels that are also about a character named Billy Bob, who is an attorney in Texas. And those are sort of legal thrillers, but they're not like any legal thrillers I've ever read. So, 
These are, and I don't know what order they are in the series. This is House of the Rising Sun by James Lee Bark. And you can see the cowboy on the cover walking off into the sunset. Terrific book. The Jealous Kind. Love the cover art on this one. How gorgeous is that? Oops, I'm holding it too close. You can probably see it better now. Oh, wonderful stuff. Cimarron Rose. Okay, Cimarron Rose is about the uh, the lawyer in Texas that I was thinking of, Billy Bob somebody. I don't remember his last name. This is the first in this series, Billy Bob Holland. He's an attorney, but he's also a former Texas Ranger. And uh, if you're not from Texas, and when I'm talking about a former Texas Ranger, I'm not talking about a baseball player here. He's a law enforcement officer. Um, and I don't know if you know anything about the Texas Rangers, but they are notoriously badasses. Um, you know, the, uh, the cliche or the quote used to be one riot, one ranger. You know, one Texas Ranger was enough to take care of a whole riot. Dixie City Jant. Okay, this is another one um, in the Dave Robichaux series. I remember liking that one pretty well. I haven't read all of these, but I've read some of them. Swan Peak. This one's, wow, this one's really beat up. Look, like a dog chewed on it. I wonder if my dog chewed that up. I bet he did. I can't imagine I would buy a book that was, and this was a library copy too. I must have bought this at the library sale in Lake Dallas because that's what's printed in there. I used to live in Lake Dallas, believe it or not. Anyway, haven't read that one. Don't know if I'm going to keep it. It's pretty ugly with the dog bites on it. Love dogs. Don't love books that were chewed up by dogs, though. And finally, book number 16 in my ongoing library tour is Light of the World, a Dave Robichaux novel. And I'm particularly fond of the cover of this. And You know, doing this video, I'm reminded that I really should take these price tags off of here. I'd really like that. Okay, so I promised you a bonus book at the end of this video, and this is the bonus book, okay? This was not on the shelf, but... We are in the middle of horror mayhem. And I've been focusing my reading during horror mayhem on short stories. And I noticed this kind of peach colored book that has no dust cover on it on one of my shelves. And I didn't remember what it was, but I thought, you know what? Maybe full of horror stories. And I picked it up and looked at it. This is Alfred Hitchcock Presents Stories for Late at Night which I must have picked up for next to nothing in a library sale or something. It's real old, the pages you get them. But my mom had these books. Alfred Hitchcock presents stories for late at night. Alfred Hitchcock presents stories that scared even me. I think there were about a dozen of these books. And they were just anthologies of short stories. And they were fun to read, especially as a kid. And I don't think Alfred Hitchcock had anything to do with the editorial direction of these, just like I don't think he had anything to do with the editorial direction of Alfred Hitchcock's Mystery Magazine. That, that doesn't make it bad, you know, but heck, if you can get away with selling your name and likeness to something to, you know, that's quality, why wouldn't you do it? But this is some of the, I'm gonna, this isn't on my TBR for Horror Mayhem or not the one that I posted a video about. Since I found it, it's one of those lucky accidents. So there's a lot of stuff in here I want to read, okay? And there's stories and novelettes both in here. But here's some of what we have to look forward to here. There's uh, The Fly, which I've already read because it was also featured in uh, The Ghouls, which I just finished, a collection of short stories. So I'm not going to reread that. But there's stuff in here. A Cry from the Penthouse by Henry Schlesar. You know, that's going to be scary because if somebody in a penthouse is, you know, crying out, it's got to be scary, right? Um, but there's also William Hope Hodgson, The Whistling Room, M.R. James, The Ash Tree, Frank Belknap Long, Second Night Out, It's a Good Life by Jerome Bixby, which I've read before. It's a terrific story, and I'm going to have no problem rereading it. I would reread The Fly, too, if I hadn't already read it so recently. I love The Fly. Uh, the Whole Town Sleeping by Ray Bradbury. The Sound Machine by Roald Dahl. Anyway, there's a terrific bunch of stories here, man. I'm really excited about reading these. 
even if the book's not particularly pretty. But it's not chewed up by a dog either, so I may hang on to it uh, and decide it yet. Anyway, so that is the end of my library tour. And I guess this is the third video in my, my bookshelf tour. The first one was just a, a video of all the books I had laying on my desk. The second one was a video of the top shelf of the bookshelf behind me and what it contained. This has been the second shelf, which held 16 books. And I'm not sure when the next installment's going to come along because that third shelf's got a lot of books to show off there. Uh, most of which, or many of which, were written by Ann Tyler. I have a really extensive Ann Tyler collection on that third shelf. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this peek into my uh, bookshelf slash library here in my house. And I will be back tomorrow with more videos. Thank you for watching. Good night.